free on the streets of Tripoli. Less than 24 hours after he was allegedly captured, Saif al-Islam Muammar Gaddafi's heir apparent made a surprise appearance. Surrounded by supporters, his presence was a boost to the morale of pro-Gaddafi forces. They've been making what many thought was their final stand, but he's keen to show the government is still in control. Speaking with the press, he poured scorn on his enemies. Uh, First of all, I'm here to refute all the rumors and reports. NATO used its most sophisticated technology to block all our communications. They sent text messages to the Libyan people. They interrupted our TV broadcasts. They waged an electronic media war against us to scare our people. They sent gangs and armed groups to Tripoli by sea and civilian vehicles to create chaos. You have seen how the Libyan people rose up yesterday and today and broke the back of the rebels and the rats and the gangs. I'm going on a tour of Tripoli now and we'll visit all the hotspots. You will see, everything is normal. Saif al-Islam rallying armed supporters in the Libyan capital. This isn't something the opposition or their NATO allies wanted to see. And it seems it's not something they were expecting. The International Criminal Court was apparently already negotiating his transfer to The Hague to face charges of crimes against humanity. And in Benghazi, the opposition has been preparing for a post-Gaddafi Libya. And now I say with all transparency that the era of Gaddafi is over. While it looks like the opposition fighters may have the upper hand, this defiant gesture by Saif al-Islam shows the conflict could still be full of surprises. When asked what he thought about his pending transfer to The Hague, damn the commission, he says. A parting shot from the defiant son. Zain Basravi, Al Jazeera. Now, still what remains in the debate going back to Libya is the question of the reason for the United States' involvement in the first place. Because protecting civilians does clearly not seem to have been the only goal. Uh, Congressman Dennis Kusuna, Kucinich of Ohio, he is one who is asking uh, in a recent uh, article if the CIA was involved in planning regime change back when protests broke out in Benghazi before that. And did the CIA have a role in fomenting what was essentially a civil war? Well, here to talk about that is Jack Rice. He's a journalist and a former CIA officer himself. Thank you for being with us. So my first question to you is, uh, you know, we, we've heard Congressman Kucinich ask, did the CIA have a role before protests broke out in February, before the events of February and March? Do you think that could be a possibility? Oh, sure I do. I mean, let's be honest. The CIA is involved in every place that they try to get involved in. They were at least on the ground in Egypt. They try to be on the ground everywhere in every major country in the region. And Tripoli is one of those places you would have expected them. So to deny it, would I think, would be naive. So I think what Dennis Kucinich, what Congressman Kucinich is talking about is a reasonable question. But I think one of the problems that we have is the U.S. has a very schizophrenic relationship and sort of approach to the Middle East in general. We talk about democracy and how we're supporting the rebels and how incredibly important this was to protect human life, etc. But we made the very same argument in Egypt, but that ignores the fact that we supported Mubarak for decades as our very closest ally in the region. Now, how do you reconcile that, those two? And I think there's a lot of people in the Middle East who are asking that very question today. Of course. I mean, it's the same question that comes up in countries like Bahrain, where the United States has not uh, had the same reaction as it did to Libya, where, of course, there are, it's, a, it's a powerful geopolitical uh, partner as well as a, a very important source of oil. But Libya is a different situation, and, and the United States has had a different relationship with uh, the leader and with that country, do you think that regime change was a plan of the United States as earlier on than, than what it unfolded to be in this civil war? I think that in the broader sense the answer is yes. I think if we look at what we found with the Arab Spring in general, when all of a sudden you realized that Egypt could fall, mm -hmm. and Egypt was going to fall, all of a sudden it opens up this broader question of what else can change in the region? And what else can we change in our favor? And let's face it, let's never deny that what the U.S. is doing here is that this isn't about protecting the people uh, of, of Libya. 
This is about American interest first and foremost. We can shine this up all we want. This is not a left or right question, a Republican or a Democratic question. This is an American foreign policy question. It's cold-blooded as hell. The problem that we have, again, is reconciling when we say one thing, but we turn around and do another. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Thursday, August 25th, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is part two of this news bulletin. My, this is my website ggnonline.com that's www.ggnonline.com not to be confused with snoop dogs ggn that's right snoop dog has his own ggn uh you come down here and there it is and i i just come across this i know this is a kind of a change of pace here after those videos you just saw the horrendous things are going on in libya but i just thought i'd throw this out there uh you know this isn't affiliated with Snoop Dogg's uh, own little news channel. So it's GGN and uh, DDarko2012 is my YouTube channel. Also, Global Government News has a Facebook uh, group. You can go in there, and uh, if you want to join, you can join. Uh, if you want to receive email updates, uh, what's going on uh, with GGN, you can do that. Uh, I have a news archive here. You just press right there, and you got them all right there. Um, also, if you have an eBlogger account, you can press on this button, and you can follow me there. Uh, other than that, uh, most, if not all, the links and headlines will be posted in YouTube's video description, so check those out in the order that they were uh, presented. Okay, let's go. Uh, it's Libya is the new Afghanistan, so it says here, uh, the worst-kept secret of Libyan campaign is al-SAS are busily hunting down the Libyan dictator, Muammar Gaddafi. And uh, it says here, so much for Cameron's insistence uh, that there would be no British boots on the ground, which is interesting because the same exact day, uh, that the globalists and the Western powers uh, went in there uh, and preemptively uh, struck Iraq, invaded them, and then uh, took out uh, Saddam was in March of 2003. It was actually one of the same, it was the same day that they started in Libya, which was kind of interesting. Uh, also, uh, you're hearing on the news, oh, that they're not going to catch Gaddafi for like six months like they did Saddam Hussein. So a lot of parallels going on with that. Uh, Gaddafi urges Libyans to drive away the infidels. You can, in a recorded voice message release late Thursday, urge his supporters to march in the millions and continue fighting the infidels, traitors, and crusaders. Quote, we will defeat you uh, via jihad, said the defiant uh, Gaddafi in his third speech since he went underground early Tuesday he called upon his supporters to march in the millions to Tripoli to drive away uh, basically what I just said the rats and the traitors Ter terror in Tripoli as loyalists fight to the death heavy fighting continues in the battle uh, to control the capital so go in there and check that out and uh, I guess they're uh, really are fighting in there it says here US distances itself and NATO from Gaddafi manhunt and um, I covered this in the first video about it had to do with oil and how they were going in there, but I thought I'd just cover it again. The U.S. on Thursday distanced itself from efforts to hunt down Libyan leader Gaddafi, saying neither U.S. assets nor NATO forces were targeting the fugitive uh, strongman. And it said comments by the Pentagon and the State Department officials highlighted Washington's sensitivity towards any perceived shift in NATO's military mission in Libya towards direct involvement in regime change. It's like, dude, the fuck, dude? You've been in there directly. Everything you guys have been doing has been direct. Now you're just going to act as if you didn't and it's pretty sick when you think about it because basically uh if it wasn't for the nato if it wasn't for these western countries bombing them and having drones and having cia involvement in in the uprising and that and now sas troops on the ground um the quote rebels uh wouldn't be in the position that they that they are now so you have these outside powers um, basically uh, just uh, saying, oh, we're going to step back and we could take out Gaddafi. We could go get him right now, and they probably will. But they're just going to like unleash the rebels on them. Uh, actually, it's probably going to be the SAS is going to catch them, and then they're going to put them out there in the square and let uh, 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 these uh, Islamist uh, nationalists and all this other uh, crazy people, uh, pro-monarchy people, uh, basically to uh, just go to town on them and maybe they'll hang them in town square and make a big spectacle out of it so 
says here NATO forces helping rebels in hunt for Gaddafi. So U.S. distances itself and NATO from Gaddafi manhunt. NATO forces helping rebels in hunt for Gaddafi. And then we go in there and talk about the Libya a secret role played by Britain, creating path to fall of Tripoli. And then, like I said, I covered this before. SAS troops dressed in Arab clothes join hunt for Gaddafi as $1 million reward is offered for dictator's head. Brother of Canadian killed in Libya expresses shock. So uh, that's right. There's a Canadian man who's uh, uh, some kind of like a information technology uh, analyst or technician, and he uh, went over there to join the fight. So it says here, order, uh, kill non-mainstream reporters in Libya, what uh, U.S. is hiding. It says here, targeted killings of non-mainstream reporters in Libya is ordered and attempts to bury the truth, says the examiner. Then uh, bloggers, Twitter account suspended for questioning events in Libya. And that's right, you can go in there and check that out. There it is right there. Uh, ICC, the criminal court urged to probe NATO crimes in Libya. That's right, these uh, harmless rebels are uh, were attacking and pillaging and raping um, innocent civilians. Rasmussen poll, only 20% of Americans support the war uh, in Libya. Then Venezuela won't recognize a new government in Libya. And Chavez says, let's pray for the Libyan civilians. And he's criticized the NATO's military invasion, saying that the U.S. military alliance bombings have come to target Libya's civilian uh, residing areas. He said, let's pray to God for Libyan people. And he said, today uh, they dropped I don't know how many bombs uh, he regretted. So he said the aim of the U.S is to intervene and seize a country's uh, and its riches. Gaddafi likely to be killed, says a defector. Pretty crazy. In the first scenario, Mr. Gaddafi will remain holed up in the south of Tripoli until the roads are reopened, and he will emerge, perhaps disguised as a woman or something else. The second possibility is that he already fled a while ago, and these... And either at the border of Algeria or in uh, Sabah, or uh, he will then cross the desert says here on Monday, he said he believed it was too late for Gaddafi to strike a deal to leave power and he would likely be killed, which is uh, crazy because he has called on the UN and NATO, uh, tried numerous times of ceasefires for the past, what, two months, um, and basically they won't allow his son to uh, resume uh, power or any other talk, so they won't even talk to him. says here, U.S. military intervention in Libya costs at least $896 million stolen from uh, taxpayers. Actually, they're stolen from people that aren't even born yet. Uh, U.N. to allow release of $1.5 billion frozen uh, funds, so South Africa struck a deal on Thursday. I just covered this. South Africa was the only one that was in the way of doing this because they're not sure who's actually in charge, so they went ahead and did it anyways. Cheney wanted Bush to bomb Syria, reveals autobiography, reveals in his autobiography he urged Bush 2007 to bomb the suspected nuclear site in Syria and Syria's Assad I'm not worried and let's not forget uh, uh, it was Gaddafi's son that actually brought down the, the nuclear program uh, back in the day the, in 2000s and uh, that was the one that that was a person that he wanted to head it up uh, Basically, uh, it says here, Syria's Assad, I'm not worried about security, but armed gangs kill eight Syrian troops. Israel kills six Gazans in 24 hours. And it says here, quick news, U.S. drone crashes in Pakistan. And then we have Pakistan orders 250 U.S. officials to leave. So a lot of tensions in, uh, in Pakistan right now. Two U.S. drones go down in Somalia. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, I covered that when the first one was in Somalia. Now they're getting shot down. Uh, Sri Lanka deploys military to quell unrest sparked by fear of nighttime prowlers known as Grease Devils. Then with CIA help, NYPD moves covertly in Muslim areas. Pretty creepy, guys. The department's dispatched undercover officers known as rakers in the minority neighborhoods, uh, part of a human mapping program. According to the officials directly involved in the program, they monitor daily life in bookstores, bars, cafes, nightclubs. Police have also used informants known as mosque crawlers to monitor sermons, even when there is no evidence of wrong. And even though it's prohibited uh, for the CIA to spy on Americans, a veteran CIA officer still on the CIA's payroll is the architect of the NYPD's intelligence program. And don't be surprised if your mayor is an actual on the CIA. Uh, uh, payroll there. 9-11 uh, first responders to be excluded from 10th Amendment anniversary ceremony. Then FBI to screen 9-11 responders against terrorists. Then uh, BART police clamped down on second week of protests. Uh, and then we have Pre Freedom U Georgia professors offer seminar for illegal immigrants. Then in the UK, net immigration soared by 20% last year, making a mockery of government pledge to bring it down. Here's a graph of the numbers, and this is going on in Scandinavia and other countries as well because it's so bad in the countries uh, in the Middle East, so they have to leave there. 
And uh, says here, China accuses the U.S. of exaggerating military threat on Thursday, followed by its military, uh, saying that it was expanding its maritime power. The Medvedev meets North Korea's Kim Jong-il in uh, Siberia. And a former Home Secretary, uh, Ms. Smith of the U.K., defends use of two prisoners drafted in to paint her $450,000 taser deaths at a disturbing rise in uh, Britain and it says here that three people were killed uh, by taser guns and pepper spray in the last eight days and in demographics on unrest in Britain and who are young men who are unemployed. This is GGN and I'm Darko.